Well, let me do one more example. It shows you the same kind of thing. Here's a very famous problem that's used to illustrate a lot of so-called backtracking computer algorithms. This is the eight queens problem. This is a chessboard. And the eight queens problem says, find a way to put down eight queens on a chessboard so that no two are attacking each other. And this is, here's a particular solution to the eight queens problem. Right, so I can't have, I have to make sure to put down queens so that no two are in the same row or the same column or uh, sit along the same diagonal. Now what's a, there's sort of a standard way of doing that. Well, first what we need to do is sort of below the surface at George's level. We have to find some way to represent a board, represent positions. And we'll not worry about that. But let's assume that there's a predicate called safe. And what safe is going to do is going to say, given that I have a bunch of queens down on the chessboard, is it OK to put a queen in this particular spot? So safe is going to take a row and a column. That's going to be a place where I'm going to try and put down the next queen. And the sort of rest of positions. And what safe will say is given that I already have queens down in these positions, is it safe to put another queen down in that row and that column? And let's not worry about that. That's sort of George's problem, and it's not hard to write. You just have to check whether, whether this thing contains any things on that row or that column or in that diagonal. Okay. Now, how would you organize the, pro the program given that? And there's sort of a, a traditional way to organize it called backtracking. And it says, well, let's start off. Let's think about all the ways of putting the first queen down in the first column. There are eight ways. Well, or let's say we'll try the first column. Try column one, row one. These branches are going to represent the possibilities at each level. So I'll try and put a queen down in the first column. And now given that it's in the first column, I'll try and put the next queen down in the first column. Well, that's no good. They're both in, in the, if I put the first queen, the one in the first column, down in the first row, I'm sorry. And then given that, we'll put the next queen down in the first row. And that's no good. So I'll back up to here. And I'll say, oh, can I put the first queen down in the second row? Oh, that's no good. Oh, can I put it down in the third row? Well, that's good. Well, now can I put the next queen down in the first column? Well, I can't visualize this chessboard anymore, but I think that's right. And I try the next one. And at each place, I, I go down as, as far down this tree as I can. And I back up. If I get down to here and find no possibilities below there, I back all the way up to here and now start again generating this subtree. And I sort of walk around. And finally, if I ever manage to get all the way down, I found a solution. All right, so that's a typical sort of uh, paradigm that's used a lot in AI programming. It's called backtracking search. And uh, it's really unnecessary. You saw me get confused while I was visualizing this thing. You sort of see the complication. This is sort of a, a complicated thing to say. Why is it complicated? It's because somehow this program is too inordinately concerned with time. It's too much I try this one and I try this one and I go back to the last possibility. And that's sort of a complicated thing. If I stop worrying about time so much, <coughs> then there's a much simpler way to describe this. It says, let's imagine that I, I have in my hands the, the tree down to k, k minus 1 levels. See, suppose I had in my hands all possible ways to solve, to put down queens in the first k columns. Suppose I just had that. Let's not worry about how we get it. Well, then how do I figure out, how do I extend that? How do I find all possible ways to put down queens in the next column? It's really easy. For each of these, for each of these positions I have, I adjoin queens. I, put, I think about putting down a queen in each row to make the next thing. And then for each one I put down, I filter those 
by the ones that are safe. Right? So instead of thinking about this tree generated step by step, I say, suppose I had it all there. And so to extend it from level k minus 1 to level k, I just need to f- extend each thing in all possible ways and only keep the ones that are safe, and that'll give me the tree to level k. And that's a recursive strategy for solving the A queens problem. All right, well, let's look at it. All right, to uh, solve the eight queens problem on a board of some specified size, I'm going to write a subprocedure called fill columns. Fill columns is going to put down queens up through column K. And here's the pattern of the recursion. I'm going to call fill columns with the size eventually. So fill columns says how to put down queens safely in the first K columns of this chessboard with, with a size number of rows in it. If k is equal to zero, well then I don't have to put anything down. So my solution is just an empty chessboard. Otherwise, I'm going to do some stuff. And I'm going to use collect. And here's the collect. I find all ways to put down queens in the first k minus 1 columns. And this was just what I said for. Imagine I have this tree down to k minus 1 levels. And then I find all ways of trying a row. That's just each of the possible rows. They're size rows. So that's a numerate interval. And now what I do is I collect together the new row I'm going to try and column K with the rest of the queens. I adjoin a position. This is George's problem. A joined position is like safe. It's It's a thing that takes a row and a column and a rest of the positions and makes a new position collection. So I adjoin, the position, I adjoin a position of a new row and a new column to the rest of the queens, where the rest of the queens runs through all possible ways of solving the problem in k minus 1 columns, and the new row runs through all possible rows, such that it was safe to put one there. Right? And, and that's the whole program. Right? Right, there's the whole procedure. Right? Not only that, that doesn't just solve the eight queens problem. Right? It, solved, it gives you all solutions to the eight queens problem. When you're done, you have a stream, and the elements of that stream are all possible ways of solving that problem. Right? Why is that simpler? Well, we threw away the whole idea that this is some process that happens in time with state. And we just said it's a whole collection of stuff. And that's why it's simpler. Right? We've We've changed our view. Remember, that's where we started today. We've changed our view of what it is we're trying to model. And we're stopped modeling things that evolve in time and have steps and have state. And instead, we're trying to model this sort of global thing, like the, like the whole flight of the chalk, rather than its, its state at each instant. Any questions? No. Um, it looks to me like uh, backtracking would be searching for the first solution it can find, whereas this recursive uh, search would be looking for all solutions. Right. And it seems that if you have a large enough uh, area to search, that, that the second is going to become impossible. OK, that's the answer to that question is the whole rest of this lecture. It's, it's exactly the right question. So you should start, well, without trying to anticipate the lecture too much, you should you should start being suspicious at this point. And exactly those kinds of suspicions. Isn't it, it's wonderful, but isn't it so terribly inefficient? That's, that's where we're going. Okay. So I won't answer now, but I'll answer later. <laughs>